Let's make a wreath. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, we're going to make a festive wreath that I created from my own imagination. I was actually contacted by a follower on YouTube and they asked me if I could make a Christmassy wreath without the snow and without all of the wintry elements that we in the North experience for our Christmas here in America. Um, we experience a colder winter Christmas, but in other parts of the world, their Christmas time is in the summer or they have warmer weather and they never receive snow. They never see snow. So they wanted to make a Christmas wreath that wasn't like a winter wreath. And I was like, that's a great idea. I would love to make that. So I'm calling this the festive wreath and I really hope you like it. If at any point in this video, you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects and you're not gonna wanna miss out. All right, let's go ahead and dive right into what materials you're gonna need to make this festive wreath. The materials that you're gonna need to make your festive wreath begin with the floral foam ring. This ring measures 9.8 inches or 24 centimeters. I found my floral ring at the Dollar Tree, but you could find yours at any craft store or Walmart or even online if you are struggling to find one. Uh, you, it's very important that you get the 9.8 inch 24 centimeter ring because this whole pattern is based off of this very ring. If you do get a ring that is larger in size, I will be putting tips in the tutorial on how to enlarge the pattern if you did get a larger ring, okay? You're gonna need a crochet hook size I9 or 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, tapestry needle, a measuring tape, very important. Also four different colors of a size four weight medium worsted or Aran yarn. And the color is green of course, and dark brown for the pine cones, light brown for the twigs within the green wreath. Actually, the light brown works very well mixed with the green, and I just loved how those paired together. Uh, and you're going to need a red for the little cranberries that we're going to be making. Don't worry about what particular yarn colors that I used. I will be putting the exact brands and the exact color names within the description section, comment section, and in the pattern itself if you choose to get exactly the same yarn that I used. But really focus on the size, weight of the yarn and get whatever color green, whatever color browns, whatever color reds that either you have on hand or you like better, you prefer better. Okay, so I'll have that information for you in those locations. Last thing you're gonna need is polyfill or stuffed animal stuffing, something that will fill those cranberries that gives it that 3D ball effect, which looks really cool on the wreath. All right, go ahead and gather all of your materials and let's get straight to making this festive wreath. Okay, we begin with our crochet hook, the green color yarn, which we will be using to make the base of our wreath. And I'm pull, I've pulled out the floral foam ring just so that I can show you why I chose to make the dimensions of this pattern and what you can do to adjust this pattern to meet the needs of your ring if your ring is larger than my ring, okay? So starting with your yarn, create your slip knot, attach your crochet hook. I begin by chaining 15 chains. So one, two, three, four, five, 14, 15. All right, so let me show you why I chose 15. This right here is going to be, here, I'm gonna pull that a little tighter, remove my crochet hook. So I'll actually go around this way so you can see it better. So there and they meet up. 15 chains is where those, those chains meet up all the way around my ring, okay? 
So if your ring is fatter than my ring, you will need to chain more chains just until your first chain and your last chain meet up with each other. All right, so there's, a, there's adjustment number one. All right, what you're going to do next for row one, you're going to skip that first chain, single crochet in the second chain, and single crochet in each chain all the way across. You should end row one with 14 single crochets. 13, 14, 14, great. Okay, at the end of each row, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and single crochet in each stitch all the way across your row. You will end each row with 14 single crochets. You're going to continue this process to the end of row 91, okay? So for row two, just making one single crochet in each stitch all the way across. You'll do the same exact thing for row three, row four, so on through the end of row 91, okay? I'll meet you at the end of row 91 and show you what to do next. I will also give you tips on if your wreath is larger than mine, what you will need to look for to continue making your rows. Okay, great. Once you have reached the very end of row 91, which if you're struggling to count your rows, it's really simple. In your work, you should start to see these lines, these definite formations of divots within your work. Between each line are two rows. So if you're looking at your work, you should see these X shapes also, which signify two rows. So you can count two, four, six, eight. It's a beautiful thing about single crochets. They make it very easy to count how many rows you have. All right, once you've reached the end of row 91, take your scissors, grab the end of your yarn. You wanna make sure you have a long slack. I'm talking two feet of slack going on, okay? Cut your yarn. yarn over and pull that loose yarn all the way through your loop. Oh, that might be closer to three feet. You want a lot. You can always cut off the slack, but it's more difficult to add on. Okay, so if your ring is larger than my ring, bigger, and you need to add more rows onto this foundation row. Let me show you what you're looking for in order to know when you need to stop. So take your wreath, and I know that these will all connect in the middle. So what I just need to make sure is that they will also connect on the outside of the wreath. And you're gonna, you're gonna wrap it around. You're gonna definitely stretch it to fit. We want it to stretch to fit. And then you wanna make sure the sides will connect. They will meet up with each other, okay? And once your sides meet up with each other and you're looking around and you're like, okay, that is a, that's a really good stretch. It's not too much where the holes are huge, but it's just fine. Still got some stretch to it here, but they meet up. That's what you're looking for, okay? So if your wreath is larger than mine, just keep making rows until your foundation can wrap all the way around your ring, okay? Great, all right, so at this point, we are going to need to grab our yarn needle, tapestry needle. Thread that through, the tail through just a little bit. Grab our ring, wrap around, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach, the, we're gonna sew the sides together, okay? And it's okay if it slips off because we can just slip that right back on, grab your two sides, put them together, and just 
sew them together. It doesn't have to be pretty because in the end, we're actually going to be putting a bunch of little frillies off of this. So no one will end up seeing this foundation at all. That's the goal anyway. I'll even slip it off just so that way I can sew these two sides together. Okay, great. We have just finished sewing our two sides together completely, taking our foundation. We're actually going to insert it on the inside of the ring. This will make it a whole lot easier to see things. We want the little tail from the very beginning of our work. We'll actually just keep it on the inside. We won't weave anything in. We'll just conceal it by keeping it on the inside of the work. Wrap the two sides all the way around your foam ring and sew the two sides together, okay? You'll want to align them. So this is where my two sides were sewn together. This was where my two sides were sewn together. So I'm gonna line up those lines to make sure everything is in sync. Again, if you make an oops, if you sew two sides that are off center together, as long as you can make this ring relatively intact, no one's ever gonna see this part. We're gonna be covering this up. So go ahead and just continue putting them together, bumping these two sides together and then sewing them together. You're gonna do this all the way around the entire ring. Which is why we needed this really long string. <laughs> okay, great. Once you've made your way all the way around the circle, you're gonna take your yarn needle and you're going to insert back into the same stitch you just came out of, holding back some of that yarn Okay, take that yarn and twist it so that it forms an X shape right there. Take your needle, go through the bottom of that loop. Okay, pull slowly, feeding that through, and that creates a slip knot. And you have just sealed off your work. You are done. Take your needle insert it back into the work just a little bit so we are feeding that tail through so it doesn't stick out. Grab your scissors, cut off that little tail that you had left and your ring portion is complete. Yay, awesome. Okay, so now the next step that we do is we move on to the actual pine cones. To make the pine cone, I'm actually using Nikki's pattern from Nikki's handmadecrafts.com. She made the cutest pine cone and I wanted to just use her pine cone. So I'm going to include the link to the pattern in the comment section, the note section, and I'll put her website to the pattern here at the bottom of the screen for you. If you'd like to go to that website to print off her pattern, give her full props. I was responsible for everything else in this festive wreath pattern, but those pine cones, man, I just had to use her pine cones. <laughs> All right, so to make Nikki's pine cones, you're gonna take your darker colored brown yarn and your crochet hook, size I9, 5.5 millimeters. Going to start with a two to three inch tail, create your slip knot, insert your crochet hook, and we're ready to start. You begin by chaining 20. One, two, three, four, and 20. Great. Okay, slip stitch into the third chain from your hook. So looking at your Vs, we got one, two, three, inserting a crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, and pull straight through that loop for a slip stitch. Right, go down three more chains. So one, two, three, 
in that third chain, we're going to make four sets of one double crochet, chain three, and then slip stitch into the third chain. So let me do that with you, okay? So double crochet into that chain, chain three, one, two, three, and then slip stitch back into that first chain right there. Perfect. Okay, that's one. Let's do that again. So double crochet in that same chain. Chain three, one, two, three, and then slip stitch into that very first chain. Okay, let's do it a third time. Double crochet in that same chain. Chain three, one, two, three, slip stitch in the first chain. Great. And one more time, putting a double crochet in that same exact chain. Chain three, one, two, three, and slip stitch into the first chain. Boom, right there. Awesome. All right, and it creates this like pokiness that you will see in an actual pine cone. Pretty neat, right? All right, for the rest of this pattern, for each chain, it says in each chain along this foundation row, it wants you to make five of these repeats. The one double crochet, chain three, and then slip stitch into the first chain, okay? And hers, it says the third chain. It means the third chain from your crochet hook to create that little pico bump on the top, okay? So next chain right here. And if they get hard to see, just go to the next visible chain on your foundation row. It's fine. It's okay, all right? So even if, see this one right here was the chain, so the very next chain is visible for me, but if yours is not visible, if your chain is too small, then go ahead and just go to the next one over. You'll be fine. Okay, so one double crochet, insert into that chain. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. Chain three, one, two, three, and slip stitch into that very first chain there. Awesome, okay. Double crochet, chain three, one, two, three, and slip stitch into that first chain. Three, four, And five, in that same chain. One, two, three, slip stitch. Great. Okay, what you're gonna start seeing is it's gonna start to spiral. That's good, we want that. We eventually want at the very end of your foundation row, we want you to see this big curly cue, okay? That's good, we want that, okay? So go ahead and continue this process making five repeats of that double crochet, chain three, slip stitch into the first chain, five of those in each chain, and I'll meet you at the very end to show you what we do next. And five. One, two, three, and slip stitch. Perfect, okay, I've made my way to the very end. You see this curly cue that's already started and you can get the idea of the pine cone already like boom right there very little to do if your pine cone isn't as curly you may have skipped a couple uh, chains in the process of making yours which if yours is not as curly cue as mine is right here that's probably what happened is you just missed one of the chains, which is fine. It's absolutely okay. So taking your scissors, 
cutting yourself a little bit of a slack here with your crochet hooks still attached to the project. Yarn over, pull through the loop for a slip knot. Pull tight. There we go. Okay, removing our crochet hook off to the side and grabbing our yarn needle. Go ahead and thread your yarn needle. Here we go. Okay, with your pine cone spiral, starting at the very first, very top, just take it and start rotating and rotating. Placing those picos where you want them to be, okay? Just keep rotating, adding more, adding the next row, making sure it's in line with what you want. If you wanna stick it out a little bit more and have a fatter pine cone, you can stick it out a little bit more. If you wanna really tuck it underneath, you can do that as well and have a thinner, longer pine cone. It's really a great place for you to make this your own. All right, and the very bottom of mine was all twisted, so that's good that I was able to fix that real quick. All right, and at the very bottom here, just lay that down and it's your pine cone, however you wanted it to look. Grab your yarn needle, insert your yarn needle into that very last stitch, that very first chain that you inserted to make your pico, and then take your needle and insert all the way through the middle of the work, attaching all of those rows See my needle right here sticking all the way through to the very, very top. Pull the yarn through and that just secures all those layers together. And then I will insert my needle back through the top and go all the way through in a different spot to the bottom. And I'm securing all sides, making this pine cone secure so it doesn't shift or move around or fall apart. Okay, if you want, you can, after you've sewn a little bit, spread those out a little bit. That way it's not as scrunched. See if that's how you want your pine cone. They're really cute. They're really small. Okay, I'm going to do one more right in the middle, the center. Okay, coming out the bottom where our tail is that we began with, removing the needle, taking those two strings and tie a knot so that everything stays put. And there is your pine cone. Ta-da! Super cute. All right, so keep the long tail because we're going to use the long tail to attach this pine cone to our wreath but I'm going to go ahead and cut the smaller tail even shorter so it's not in the way. All right, repeat this process two more times so that way you have a grand total of three pine cones. Okay, I'm gonna cut these little tails off then as well. All right, so you want three pine cones and then we will move on to creating our cranberries. To make the cranberries, all you're going to need is your red colored yarn and your crochet hook and some polyfill or stuffed animal stuffing that we are going to put inside of the cranberry to give it that 3D ball effect. Okay, beginning with about a three inch tail, create your slip knot, insert your crochet hook, and we're ready to go. Okay, so the cranberries will be worked in rounds. So you can begin one of two ways. You can either use the chain two method or you can use a magic ring. They both do the exact same thing. I am fond of the chain two method, so I will just chain two right here. Or you can create your magic ring. For round one, you're going to make six single crochets in your very first chain or six single crochets inside your magic ring. Okay, so here we go. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Now, if you are fond of using row markers or stitch markers, you would attach one to this the sixth stitch, the sixth single crochet that we just made. Uh, I like to use my tail. So I make my tail longer for this very reason. I'm going to yarn over the tail, pull that through the loop, and that indicates that we have just ended that round. So it closes off the round and it's a row marker. It's an indicator right here that, oh, that was the last stitch that I ended round one with, okay? So moving on to round two, we just move right into the round. We do not slip stitch chain one. We're just going to make two single crochets in that first single crochet stitch, one, two, and then continue to make two single crochet stitches in each stitch around. You will end round two with 12 single crochets. One, two, one, two, 11, and 12. Great. Okay, at this point you can attach a second row marker if you want to keep a row marker to count how many ro what rows you're on, what row you are on. Or you can move your stitch marker from round one to round two in that 12th single crochet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to yarn over the tail, pull the tail through that loop, and that indicates to me that I just finished round two. For round three, you're going to make one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. You will end round three with 12 single crochets. One, two, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, move your row marker, add a row marker, or just yarn over the tail and pull the tail through that loop. We've just closed off round three. So you'll see that it's started to curl. I'm gonna push that curl to curl down instead of curl up. And you can see that the spherical shape is starting to take shape. Pretty cool. All right, so for round four, we're going to single or two single crochet tog or decrease single crochet every two stitches together with a single crochet stitch. So going into the first stitch, yarn over, pull through. Going into the second stitch, yarn over, pull through. You'll have three loops on your crochet hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now you've just turned two stitches into one. You're gonna repeat that process all the way around round four and you will end round four with a total of six stitches. Two, six, great. Okay, move your row marker, add a row marker, or yarn over the tail and pull the tail through that last loop right there. Okay, after round four is finished, that's when I stuff my cranberry with the polyfill. You'll just need a little bit. You don't want to overstuff the cranberries because then you will really see the white stuffing on the inside. And we wanna to try to avoid that as much as possible. But we also still want to make, have the cranberry maintain shape so that way it's not too deflated in a way, okay? So for round five, we're just going to two single crochet tog or decrease single crochet every two stitches together to really close up this cranberry. You're going to end round five with a total of three stitches. Okay, so insert into one hook, yarn over, pull through, insert into the second space, yarn over, pull through, You've got your three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. Okay, there's one, two, 
two and last one three perfect okay so yarn over your tail that closes round five I'm going to reinsert my crochet hook right here grab my scissors Cut a longer tail, long enough just to attach the cranberry to the wreath, so it doesn't have to be too long, okay? And to create our slip knot, we're going to yarn over the long tail that we just cut, pull that through the loop, and pull that tight, and that creates a slip knot. Pull the small one, closes the hole, and then I will knot these two tails together to secure that hold. And that is cranberry number one. You're going to repeat this process until you've made a grand total of nine cranberries. We want nine of these. So go ahead and take a second, make all nine of your cranberries, and then we will move on to attaching our pine cones and our cranberries to our wreath. Okay, with your cranberries, when they are all done with these little tails, I like to insert my crochet hook in the top of the cranberry, wiggle it all the way through to the bottom, grab the tail, pull the tail into the work. There we go. Grab more of the tail, pull that into the work, twist the crochet hook to leave the tail on the inside of the work. And now that tail is snug inside all that polyfill. Hides the tail for you so there's no little tails, nothing to worry about. All right. We have all of our cranberries done. We have all of our pine cones done. Now we're ready to attach these to the wreath. Okay. I prefer to attach everything before I add the fringe. That way I can see where all my stitches are and I can see what I'm doing in it helps to secure these things to the actual foundation piece and not securing these things onto a bunch of fringe, if you know what I mean. All right, so I'm gonna begin with the pine cones. So I'm gonna set those off to the side. Three pine cones. I like to place these pine cones equally equal distance apart from each other. So I'll have like one here, one like there, and one here. This is your choice. If you want to bunch all three of them together, that would be super cute also. So really, let this be yours. You, you design it. You do what you think looks best. Okay, so yarn needle, pine cone. I'm going to attach it right here. First things first, insert my yarn needle in between stitches. And all you are doing, I'll show you the long distance way, is going in and out, basically, of the work to attach your pine cone here. So I'm going to do this, pull this all together. All right, it's a little difficult for me to show you under the camera because it gets really up close. Okay, and... Right there. I guess this is super close, guys. <laughs> Real close. Okay. There we go. Okay, continuing this all the way around for a secure hold. Let me finish this one so I can show you how I close off the pine cone, and then I'll let you do pine cone number two and pine cone number three on your own. Okay, I've made my way all the way around so the pine cone is secure. Give it a little tug, see if there's any weak spots anywhere you want to address before you tie off your yarn. Give it a little frill. Cute. All right, so in that last spot that I just came, where my yarn is attached to, I'm going to bring my needle same location. Stick my finger in that yarn so it holds back a loop. Okay, so this is now tight right here. Take this loop and 
twist it so it forms this X shape. Take my needle underneath the loop, slowly feed that loop down so it doesn't create a knot with a big loop still left out. Great, and that's your slip knot. Reinsert your needle right where you just came out of. Pop out the other side, allowing your tail to be locked into the fibers a little bit. Grab your scissors, cut your tail short. There's pine cone number one, guys. Pine cone number one. Great, okay, go ahead and take a second and attach pine cone number two, pine cone number three on your own, wherever you would like to place them. And I will meet you back here in a second and we will attach the cranberries. Great, okay, once you have attached all three of your pine cones, we are now going to start attaching our cranberries. Okay, so when I made my wreath, I attached three cranberries, so let me pull three out, one, two, three. So I attached three cranberries at the base of each pine cone. So they looked like this. And then I put three on the exact same side, so everything was symmetrical in my wreath. So three cranberries here, and then three cranberries here, and then three cranberries here. That's how I did it, but if you want to just sporadically put like all over your wreath, then do that too. Just really have fun with it, okay? So I'm going to show you how I attach the first cranberry, and then I think you will be off and able to do the rest on your own. So I, t I move the pine cone kind of up and out of the way so it can look like the cranberry is snuggled right into the pine cone. Okay, so I'm going to insert my needle right there into the work and then showing you longhand, insert my needle into, I like to go into row four of the cranberry and then back into the work and then back into here and really just back and forth from cranberry to wreath, from cranberry to wreath, attaching this cranberry. All right, once you've gone all the way around, go ahead and fluff up that cranberry a little bit. Check your pine cone, how's everything looking? Okay, if you're satisfied, if it looks great to you, then you're going to take your needle, insert it back into the work, pull through, but hold back some of your yarn. Okay, take that loop and twist it, or twist it the other way, whichever way, form an X shape. See, here's the X right here, where they cross each other. Okay, I'm gonna take my needle and I want so my yarn, I want to go underneath the yarn. So I want to go under it like this. Pull it through, feed it slowly, and that should form a slip knot. If you do this process and it does not secure at the base, does not create a knot, it just creates some something loose, then you probably inserted your needle into the wrong side of the loop. So just try again inserting your needle into a different side and it should form that slip knot. Okay, inserting my needle from the bottom of the cranberry, sticking out the top, pull that through. What this does is it conceals the tail. So I'm not cutting it super short and then everything is so short that it could come undone, but the tail gets sucked on the inside of the cranberry and gets intermixed with all of that polyfill and it's stuck and secured. Cut that off and your first cranberry is done. Beautiful, okay, so that's all there is to it, just sewing and attaching the cranberry. That's how I like to sew and attach my cranberry. 
right in there among the among the pine cone. And then again, I'm going to make three on this side, then three on this side, and three on this side, creating perfect symmetry. But if you want to just stick cranberries randomly all over your wreath, do it. Have fun with this. All right, so I'm going to let you go ahead and attach the rest of your cranberries. And then after that, we're going to start making our little fringe to stick off of this wreath and really create a more realistic looking wreath, which is really cool. But I like to save that part to the last after attaching all of these pieces. All right, so go ahead and attach all of your cranberries and I'll see you in just a second to go over the next step. All right, great, we've managed to get all of our cranberries on. And if you want to, what's great is you can just rotate these sides if you found that you want your placement to be different or if you want it moved out, you can move it out more. It's really cool how you can really just make that your own, like really just mold it and twist it and make it right for you. Okay, the last thing we are going to be doing is making the little fringe, the little frillies. Okay, and this really helps make the wreath look like an actual wreath with its pine needles. And you got the little twigs that are often in there as well. And we're gonna start working on that. You're going to need your tape measure. You're going to need your green color and you're going to need your light brown color and your scissors. We are going to be cutting strips for the frills. Okay, so you are going to be cutting each strip to be two and a half inches long. I know it seems a little short, but trust me, I have I tried out five inches and it was way too long. And I was very, very happy with how two and a half inches looked. Okay, you'll end up cutting 237 of these green ones and you'll end up cutting 25 brown ones. Okay, I know it's a lot, but trust me, even then I wouldn't go any less than the 237 green and the 25 brown because even with this one that I made, that's how many I used, exactly how many I used to make this wreath and there's still some spots where I could add more. So this is gonna take a little while, embrace it, <laughs> it'll be okay, but you're going to be making all of your cuts right now and I'll see you in a second to show you what you do with your cuts and that's it after this part after we cut we attach and after we attach we're done okay so you are super close great okay so now that we have made all of our little cuts we're now ready to attach now how you attach insert your crochet hook into a stitch just like so Grab one of your little cuts, fold it in half around your finger, okay? So you make a little loop. Attach your crochet hook, grab the little loop with your crochet hook, pull the loop into the stitch while holding back the two ends here. Then you're going to yarn over those two ends and pull it through the loop, just like this. So it attaches, attaches right there to your actual foundation part of the wreath, okay? So there it is. And that's what you do all the way around. Go into the next stitch over, take your string, fold it in half around your finger Pinch the bottom so you can remove your finger, which makes a little loop. Grab the loop with your crochet hook, pull through just the loop, grab the two ends, pull the ends through the loop, and it secures that knot. That's it. And then periodically I will take a brown and I will, if I like see a lot of green going on, I'll stick a brown in there somewhere. And the brown will just look like the twigs. Okay, getting close to the pine cone and getting close to the cranberries, that's okay. I will actually 
insert my crochet hook into like that spot right here. Grab the loop, pull the loop partial through, grab the two tails, pull those tails through the loop, pull tight, and then you got part of that wreath that's like sticking out right in the right next to the cranberries. You'll keep doing this until all these are gone and it'll look like this. So what you will see here is I added all around the pine cone. I didn't go under the pine cone. See how there's some bald spots here. I just went around and that's another reason why I attached the pine cones and the cranberries first before doing the frills because if we would have done the frills first it would have been more challenging for us to attach the pieces to the actual foundation these would have ended up just attaching attaching to the frills and then being able to pull off all right so the, this way it secures them and we just take those frills and we kind of frill them up right around the pieces and like i said i went really light we look sideways I focused on only attaching my frills to what was visible from the outside. So even looking here, you'll see I stopped at a certain point all the way around. I didn't go all the way around. Now, why did I do that? The big reason I did that is so that this side could lay flush against a wall. If you have the frills, on this side, then the frills will create a mass that will push against the wall. And if you're trying to get like a nail hook on there, it'll be a little more room that the that you have to clear before it will like hook onto a nail or hook onto something that you can hang this on. Okay, so I really wanted the back to be bare so this could lay flush against a wall. Okay, but the outside all frilly, so it looks like it is full without actually being full. And that's why I, why I said that I could have attached more in the middle. I could have really attached more in some of these bare spots, but I felt honestly that the thinner it was, the more realistic it looked. Okay, so this right here, what you see right here, is the exact number of cutouts that I had you cut out. That's all you see here. All right, so once you have done adding all of these onto your wreath, you are done, you're finished. And I really hope that you had fun. Guys, I really hope you like your wreath and I love that you can personalize it however you want. If you want to add more of these little frilly fringe, add more. If you want more cranberries, add more, more pine cones add more really make it your own and uh, i really hope you had fun if you did you would also really enjoy these other christmasy videos that i have made or check out this video which is just a recommended video for you to watch thank you so much for spending time with me today crocheting with me i always love crocheting with you i hope you have an amazing day and i will see you with my next video bye guys <laughs>